but you thought you could play the game better than the people who understand the rules. What is good, you guys, and welcome on another episode today. If you are joining for the very first time, thank you so much for being here today. I have a video here with me of a Black American woman who is talking or just sharing her opinion on the fact that now that different people from other countries who now stay in America are now making some complaints or now talking about certain things in America that they have been saying for years, but they have been painted the wrong way, you know. There's always this diaspora conversation going on about, oh, black people do this to Americans. They see Americans this way. They see black Americans this way. They said they are lazy. The system is good. They are not making use of the opportunity. You guys know this conversation of this diaspora war thing in that has been going on so let you drop an interesting perspective about these people who always talk like black americans are the problem black americans are the one who are not making use of the opportunity they have like now that you are now seeing the united states in its true form and they are now coming out to complain and talk about it this is what she thinks about it so without wasting much time let me just get right into the video and we will come back and talk about it as a black american it's very interesting to me now seeing all of these people from different walks of life, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different countries, different races, get online and start picking apart the United States of America. And I'm a I told you so type of person and I, I will gloat and I will not have any shame doing so. It's very interesting watching them draw conclusions that we've been screaming from the rooftop and screaming from the mountaintop for centuries. But no, y'all thought we were lazy. Y'all thought we were entitled. Y'all thought we just wanted handouts y'all thought that it was us y'all thought we were the problem no we've always seen this country for what they are we peep game before anybody else do and it's particularly interesting when black people from other countries come to the united states with all of their preconceived notions about who we are as if we just have all of these blessings at our fingertips and we're just squandering it because we're lazy and ratchet and ghetto and don't want to work and don't want to be educated. Anything y'all can possibly do, we've already done, period, <laughs> period. So the irony is thick when y'all get online and start complaining about the cost of living. Listen, complaining about the poison in the food because of the position that black Americans and the route by which we've become American because of that positioning we know we know the game we peep the games long before anybody else peep it because we have more foresight than y'all and it take other people much longer to do the math including white people We've always had our food poisoned. We've always had our physical persons being experimented on. We've always had been charged prices higher than everyone else. See, and people come over here and they act like we're the problem and we're lazy and we just don't have it together. When we know the games that they play because we've been through and seen the underbelly of this country. We've seen the darkness that this country is. But you know, y'all thought y'all were going to come and get a different result. Y'all thought y'all would come and you could play the game better and actually win. And I just sit around when I see people making videos, when I see people of color and white people and black people from other countries that live in the United States and have been here for a while and is finally doing the math when you could have just listened to us, especially if you're black and from another country, because you came and stood on the foundation that we did. And you have done nothing, nothing. There is nothing anybody can do in this country that black Americans haven't already done, period. But you thought you could play the game better than the people who understand the rules. <laughs> Cackles in Black American. Cackles in I told you so. Cackles in I don't care. Yeah. But you thought you could play the game better than the people who understand the rules. <laughs> I stitched the end of that video to make sure you watch the entire fucking thing because she hit the nose on what's happening. I too am cackling in Black American. Non-Black people of color who immigrated, Black folks in other countries immigrated, and white people who immigrated or have been living here allowed their anti-Blackness towards Black Americans as the ethnic group that we are to persist, which clouded their judgment, resulting in an inability of them not being able to fully assess the landscape they are trying to enter in. They want to just call us lazy, call us know-hows, call us people who can't just do 
shit. Truth of the matter is, we are the fucking reason they have birth birthright citizenship. Truth of the matter is, we are the fucking reason we have civil rights that they are even allowed to exist in the goddamn country. Like, I'm so fucking heated because thinking about the the end of affirmative action in particular, um, we are seeing non-black people of color try to shimmy their asses closer to whiteness as if they are gonna get fucking left. As if it is not black people who were always pushing for them to be included. As if indigenous folks and black people were not the testers of this country. Y'all think you know better than us? You fucking don't. And the gag is, non-black people of color in particular, even black immigrants, know how black Americans are treated and they don't wanna be treated like us. They know that we are excluded from society. They know fully well the way black Americans are treated, which is why they try to shimmy closer to whiteness in order to never be treated like a black person or indigenous person in the United States. It is a reason why non-black immigrants in the 20th century were suing to be classified as white, but specifically not classified as black. What she's saying, like, sure, some folks maybe are waking up, but let's be so for real, they're not really waking up considering how the way they're moving in this wake up stage. They are seeing that they themselves may be treated the same way black and indigenous folks have been treated in this country and they don't want that. That's what they're waking up to. The thing is, what will save us is by listening to the indigenous and black people who have been living in this country for millenniums, as well as centuries. Because again, we know the rules, we know the landscape of what we are dealing with. But because they see black Americans in particular as lazy dindus, they gonna get left by whiteness. Countries, different races, get online and start picking apart the United States. So whenever the diaspora war conversation comes up on social media, I stay quiet for a couple reasons. First and first mostly, it's exhausting to argue down people who are brainwashed, so I just don't do it. And secondly, because I'm Jamaican American and um, second generation, so definitely Americanized, but I can see how some of my upbringing and some of the things that were said, you know, by my grandparents who immigrated here in the 50s, you know, were shady and I probably have blind spots myself. So because of that, I just don't like to take space and lead up conversations like that. And I'm silently supportive in the background. You can always tag me in. But I like that the AA people just lead it and they always crush it every time it comes up. Now, it's important to listen to what my good sis is saying in that full video because that's a missing link of the conversation that doesn't get brought up nearly enough when diaspora wars com come up within the African diaspora, but also when other races start attacking us for being lazy and whatever stereotypes they've been fed. Because quiet as it's kept, all immigrants that came to the United States after the Immigration Rights Act in the 1960s have us to thank and can kiss my feet about that. And we don't toot our horn nearly enough because we deserve a lot more respect than we're given and we don't demand it. We let you guys make a fool out of yourselves and then when something happens in your community and you fuck around and find out what you're really up against, then, you know, we decide whether or not to help you out or not. But the truth of the matter is you treat us like shit because it's easy to do. A lot of y'all would not be here if those African Americans that you call lazy and dumb and ghetto and welfare queens and complainy and loud and ratchet did not lay down their lives, lay down and sacrifice for the betterment of this entire fucking country. See, you don't want me to get to going because without the Civil Rights Act, without the Voting Rights Act, without the whole civil rights movement, the women's rights movement wouldn't have shit. The Immigration Act wouldn't have passed. Uh, Title IX wouldn't have gone through. Let's see what else. I mean, gay rights. I mean, we can name the list. We just allow y'all to act a fool in our face so we know who we can and can't trust. But more specifically to our people within the African diaspora, whether you're West Indian or you're African and you come on here acting like you're better than us, baby, you're gonna fuck around and find out eventually. And I'm not gonna be around to save you for that. We have warned you, but you can continue to think that you're under the guise of whiteness and the protection of whiteness when you were really just brought here as a fucking pawn. 
This is why African Americans in the indigenous community really relate because no matter what, we are always excluded on the outside of society because our existence points to a negative history that the establishment does not want to acknowledge, accept, or be accountable for. So we will always be excluded. So we've existed outside of societal norms and still made shit happen and also made shit happen for y'all. Y'all are the modern minority myth. It's not just Asian people or South Asian people that get that title. It's all immigrant people that came to this country because you came for the same specific reason, which was to be used as a tool to belittle the movement, the cries for help, the cries for equality from us. And instead of looking around and saying, you know what, let me listen to people of color and see their humanity, y'all turned your back on us. The Africans, the West Indians, all of y'all turned your back on us and said, you know what, I'd rather buy into white society instead of listening to the warnings that these people that look like me are fucking telling me. You chose to invest in whiteness over everything. You chose to invest and listen to the lies that those people who colonize your land, who call you savages, who call you backwards, are telling you about people that look like you. Does that make any fucking sense? It doesn't. So, you know, again, I don't really argue when this conversation comes up on the internet because why? You'll find out and we won't be here to save you. Investing in whiteness and you're not a white person is a surefire way to go completely bankrupt and you'll see because this whole shit is crumbling and when you're searching for community baby hopefully you can find one because a lot of people are going to turn their backs on you for how you acted when we all needed help when we all needed your support you turned your back on us baby it's gonna go both ways if you don't know, hi, my name is Madison. I'm the creator of the Madison channel. I have a podcast called Bloodstained where we look at history through the lens of true crime. Season one is about slavery and I have a whole episode coming out next month about the diaspora wars. Link in the bio to subscribe to all of my things. Check me out. Yeah. Mwah. We know, we know the game. We peaked the games long before anybody else. The US of A is going through a, what they call a Pluto return. If you don't know, you can Google it. I'm not gonna give much information. You can probably search it on TikTok here. There has been a lot of Caribbean, a lot of people from African tribes um, who have been told lies to get them to come over here and work. There are people right now that are immigrants. Remember, an immigrant find out quickly about what goes on in a system than what, than what you think. What happens when it affects you? Somebody on here was talking about how he, they were an editor. I couldn't pay off my mortgage. I'm doing Instacart, DoorDash. Why are you shocked? Keyword, capitalism. It's everyone for themselves. Oh, we need community. We need that. Ask Tulsa. Bombings. Ask Lake Lanier. Drowned the whole town. Ask Black Wall Street. When we don't need them, they will take. The house always wins. Let me ask this question. For those who are from the African um, nations, who told you that African Americans were lazy? I want to know who instilled that lie because it brings back to a great conversation because I was on Avatar Talk, uh, The Last Airbender because of the Netflix show. And remember that episode where he went into a Fire Nation school and the instructor said, yeah, the reason why the Air Nation is now extinct is because the Air Nation attacked the Fire Nation. And Aang said, that never happened. What are you talking about? For those who are first generation immigrants, second generation, or have been here, I'm not mad at, I can't be mad at immigration. 
But what I can say is you got to peak game. There are people, there are people who literally will not learn the English language and will stay in a specific state because they don't want to assimilate. But they yell and scream, oh, I miss, I miss this town. I miss living there. Then go back. Why did you leave? So let's call a spade a spade. Pluto returned, U.S. of A. We are all. Why are you shocked? I didn't know this. I have to do this. I have to door dash and I'm an editor in Hollywood. Baby, they don't care. It's capitalism, baby. We can't get work. What's going on? Capitalism. Karma. Karma said, I want my thing. I want it now. Next day, word to Amazon. I want it now. You bought into the lie. That's why it's so funny when people sit here and say, oh, you don't, you know, there's African-Americans that are not nice. Why do you have a mean face? Excuse me? Because I don't grin and bear it. I don't put on the smile. Oh, yes, I, I'm happy to be here. and top for centuries but no y'all don't listen to black women y'all ignore everything black people say y'all don't look into black history because they told you not to so here's what's about to happen and this woman is totally correct because y'all don't listen to us anyway as these white folks separate from us which they are currently doing y'all be talking about project 2025 niggas already started as they separate, the ones that hasn't got it are going to get it because it's going to slap them in the face. Period. They're, they are separating right now. They, they don't want to go to college with you. They don't want to work with you. They are currently separating from us. And the ones that... What do you guys think about what the creator who started the conversation said? And what is your take on what the other stages have to say as well? The diaspora war conversation is a conversation that comes up very often. This creator actually made a very solid point. It can be so painful when you know that, you know, your own people fought for this land that you all are coming in now and started calling us lazy about. Knowing that your people fought for it, people will always see you people as being lazy, not taking up opportunities wanting everything to be handed over to them i think this is where these creators are coming from like it can be so painful but let's not take away from the fact that the media has done a very bad job painting these people a certain way to a lot of african people even before they even step their feet in america i see a lot of people make this point in the last video that i uploaded about this diaspora conversation and i love the question that one of the teachers is asking like who exactly told you guys black americans are lazy who told you that they are lazy like they are not lazy but they want to silence them and they are not trying to be silenced because they already understand the system so this is what this creator is saying we know the system we are telling you guys how the system works but you guys are not going to believe and just want to appeal to this palm colored people instead of you to listen to the people who look like you who have been in the system who understand the rules who have been there for so long this person said if only we could collectively come out of the brainwashing which i totally agree with like i worked on pushing away xenophobia but black americans who are not african americans keep eating that wall and i don't know why Another one said, absolutely this. There are too many Asians in my case, South Asian folks in this country that are just happy to embrace whiteness with their old self with no embarrassment. Another person said, I keep saying they are about to find out what it's like to be black. The difference is we know how to go through some things and we are not going to help them this time another one said it's like when your mom warns you about certain friends but you still befriend them then it backfires and you realize she was right about them all along 
Another person said, as a Jamaican that moved to America, I get hungry when immigrants come to America and talk bad about African American. Like you all did not pave the way for them. And this is one of the like the most things being said. Like Africans will come and start acting like it's not this evil that even paved the way for them. And when you want to hear from an African person's perspective, they will say whenever they come, Black Americans feel like they are better than them. And this has always been the back and forth case. And this is the reason why we need to be done with this brainwashing. We need to decolonize our mind. Both hands, both hands have a lot of work to do in order for us to come together. We need to learn. We need to unlearn. And we need to relearn because our unity is very powerful. Another person said, as a black American woman, I'm at the point of not wanting to save this country, honestly. What exactly are we trying to save when the entire structure is designed to fight, to fight us at every turn? Another one said, and people don't realize that we as black Americans continue to have conflicts with the United States and fight against the system is because we won't let them gaslight us into submission and silence. They are online calling themselves slaves now. It is so disrespectful. So now that everyone is getting treated black, now slavery isn't over now, all of a sudden. The last one I have here said, the reason they can even come here and have a chance is because of the sacrifice we and our ancestors made. They need to be humble let me know what you guys think about this conversation if you have always or you have at any point in time see this diaspora conversation from the point of immigrant africans caribbeans like if you have seen this conversation from their own point please let me know what you guys think about this conversation in the comment section before you go please help smash the subscribe button like the video and i'll see you guys in the next one